This lesson deals with a band pass and a band stop property. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 37. For a band pass or a band stop filter, the 3 dB bandwidth in radians per second, and that's the upper corner frequency minus the lower corner frequency, is equal to omega naught over Q naught. Further, the value of omega naught is the square root of the product of omega C1 and omega C2. Now, why would that be true? As we show back on page two, the corner frequencies for a bandpass filter are where the amplitude drops from the center frequency value to that over the square root of two. In other words, down three dB. Let's take the magnitude expression from page 33 and let's set it equal to the value of H naught over the square root of two. So what frequencies would this be true? Well, we can see from the graph that there's two of them. Let's see if we can solve for them. What's interesting here is the H naught cancels on both sides of the equation. Cross multiply here by the square root of two times omega naught over Q naught times omega, and then bring this term over here, the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. Now let's square both sides of the equation. So I get two, and then this quantity squared, and then what's under the radical, which is the quantity omega naught squared minus omega squared squared plus omega omega naught over Q naught squared. Let's bring this on the other side of the equation, same term as this one, so we have a negative two plus one, which gives a minus one. Let's square this term, so we get omega naught squared squared, so omega naught to the fourth, the inner product times two, so that would be minus two omega naught squared times omega squared, and then lastly a minus omega squared squared, which is a plus omega to the fourth. Let's rearrange terms. The omega to the fourth here, let's pull out a minus omega squared. So I'm left with this term as a two omega naught squared. Here's that term, and then pulling the same thing out of here, I have the omega squared, and here's my omega naught squared, I'm left with one over q naught squared. And then lastly, omega naught to the fourth. What I've got here is something with omega to the fourth, omega squared, and then omega to the zero. Let me let x equal omega squared. So I get x squared minus x times this quantity plus omega naught to the fourth. And I can use a quadratic formula to find the roots. That's going to be minus this term, two minuses cancel, plus or minus the square root of this term squared, which would be omega naught to the fourth, and then this quantity squared, minus four times one times omega naught to the fourth, divided by two times one. Let's bring a two up into the numerator. It's one and a two here. I'll bring the two inside the radical as a four, and then put that inside here as a two. So I'll cancel that two and then have a two here. Bringing this two inside as a four, I cancel with that four and just get a minus one times omega naught to the fourth. Let's multiply this out. So I've got omega naught to the fourth times one squared. So that's just omega naught to the fourth. And I've got the inner product times two and have two over two Q naught squared times omega naught to the fourth. So I'm just left with omega naught to the fourth over Q naught squared, squaring this and then minus omega naught to the fourth. This term cancels with this one. And let me pull out an omega naught to the fourth, which becomes omega naught squared, and then a Q naught squared, which just becomes Q naught. And I'm left with one, and then one divided by four Q naught squared. I can make this a perfect square, and then I can take the square root of it to find the value of omega. Let me write this term here as one over four Q naught squared. It's one over four Q naught squared. When I add these two together, I get two over four Q naught squared, which is this term. I've got a perfect square. Let's see if that works. Square this, I wind up getting this term. Square this, plus or minus, I get a plus this term. And then I get the inner product times two. I would cancel this two, and I'm left with this term right here. If we take the square root of this equation, we get the value of omega to equal to omega naught times this quantity, the square root of one plus one over four Q naught squared plus or minus one over two Q naught. Now there's two values here, but we'll call the larger one omega C2 and the smaller one omega C1. Let's take a difference of those two. So this term with the plus sign and then this term with the minus sign. Subtract those two, we get some terms dropping out. This term cancels with this one and we have omega naught over two Q naught and then a minus, a minus the same quantity, omega naught over two Q naught. So adding those together, we get omega naught over Q naught. So the term that multiplied S in the denominator of the bandpass filter is the difference of the two 3 dB frequencies. Let's multiply those two together and see what happens. So here's the omega C1 term with the minus sign and then omega C2 with the plus sign. Multiply these two together, we get an omega naught squared and then this term multiplies this one so we get what's under the radical which is one plus one over four Q naught squared. Then this term times this one is exactly the same as this one with the opposite sign. So they cancel. And lastly, the product of these two is a minus one over four Q naught squared. So these cancel, 
and I then get that omega naught squared is equal to omega C1 times omega C2. So then omega naught is the square root of that product. And the ratio of omega naught to Q naught is the 3 dB bandwidth in radians per second. Let's repeat the same calculation, but now for the band stop filter. So let's take the magnitude equation from page 35 and let's set it equal to H naught over the square root of two, which is the gain at low and high frequencies, dropping by three dB. Again, we get the H naught to cancel. I'll cross multiply by the square root of two and bring this term over here and square both sides of the equation. So I get two times the quantity omega naught squared minus omega squared squared. And then what's underneath the radical? Let's bring this on this side of the equation. So I've got two times this quantity and then minus one of those. So I just have one times the quantity omega naught squared minus omega squared squared. And then bringing this term over here, I get a minus the quantity omega omega naught over Q naught squared. Multiply this out. We're gonna get omega naught to the fourth, inner product times two. So it's gonna be minus two times omega squared omega naught squared. And then this term minus omega squared squared and becomes a plus omega to the fourth. And then this term is repeated down here with squaring each term. If you look back on the last page, on line four, it's exactly the same equation we had for the bandpass filter. So the derivation will end in the same results, that the difference of the two 3 dB frequencies, this is where we're gonna drop 3 dB from the low and high frequency gain, is gonna be equal to the term that multiplies S, which is omega naught over Q naught. And that the product of omega C1 and omega C2 square root is the center frequency of the notch, which we call omega naught. These are some of the properties of a bandpass and a bandstop filter.